Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. The Paycheck Protection Program was supposed to protect businesses and workers from the pandemic. But PPP loans also line the pockets of countless crooks with your tax dollars. A Mesa couple, Jason and Kimberly Coleman, have been convicted of going on an international spending spree with paychecks for phony workers. The couple put down $7 million cash for two palatial homes in Mesa. They had two residences on the beach in Rocky Point. They paid six figures for their cars, and they stashed $1 million in the Middle Eastern Emirate of Dubai. A Sierra Land woman pleads guilty to filing false paperwork for COVID business assistance. Court records show Corinne Campbell helped file paperwork for two convicted felons. Both received more than $20,000 from the Paycheck Protection Program, claiming their businesses were hurt by the pandemic. The problem? Those businesses don't exist, according to prosecutors, and both men were in prison at the time. Prosecutors have agreed to recommend a lenient sentence for Campbell's a plea. A woman will spend six and a half years in a federal prison after the Department of Justice says she got a PPP, a PPP loan she didn't earn and lied about how she used it. Leslie Bethia pleaded guilty to one count of wire fraud and one count of making a false statement to her probation officer. She'll also pay $20,805 in restitution. That was also the amount of her fraudulent payroll protection loan. When she got the loan, the DOJ says she used some of the money at a resort in Sunny Isles Beach in Florida and the other portion for plastic surgery. Millions of dollars ended up in the hands of fraudsters and scammers. They were all prosecuted from the Northern District of uh, Georgia. At the forefront of hunting them down, the Atlanta Bureau of the Secret Service, charged with protecting the nation's financial system and headed by Chief Agent Stephen Basil. This type of fraud is a very high priority for our agency and in our office we have approximately 15 to 20 agents that investigate it on a full-time basis. As many small businesses struggled, money meant to save them went to luxury goods. According to federal complaints, that includes a Minnesota man who took money for manufacturing payroll and went golfing, a New Jersey attorney who got $9 million for fake businesses and remodeled his home, an Atlanta reality star who spent $2 million on a Rolls Royce and a Rolex watch, and a former NFL player who allegedly joined a scheme to get $24 million in federal federal funds. They all deny the government's charges. The Justice Department so far has charged more than 50 defendants for attempting to steal over $175 million from the Paycheck Protection Program. U.S. Secret Service has opened some 700 investigations into CARES Act fraud. Which programs are you seeing getting exploited by criminals the most? We see the payroll protection program and then the emergency injury disaster loan program also, which includes both loans and uh, an advance or a grant. These grants, up to $10,000 in upfront cash, require even less information than PPP loans. All you needed was basic information about your business and the bank account for the money to be deposited. You didn't even have to be a very smart criminal to try to defraud this system. People were doing things like filling in the application with the names of Game of Thrones characters. The small Honey. Now, y'all just watch that montage, okay? Let me find out Tyrion and Cersei Lannister got motherfucking PPP loans, bitch. Who, which one of y'all was out here filing for PPP loans in the name of Game of Thrones, damn it? Child, this is a mess, okay? Anyways, happy Friday, tea sippers I hope everybody's doing good today. We are still in Leo season. I'm still bringing y'all that piping hot tea. So we were having a good discussion earlier today on um, Discord. If y'all don't know, the reason why I decided to play that montage, we're gonna, I'm going to bring y'all back to 2020, okay? Travel back in time with your girl, lovely T. Damn, I should make that a theme song or something. Do some little throwback, do some little throwback nostalgia videos. But anyways, okay? So back in 2020, the PPP loan thing was hot. 
And when I realized that people were doing this, you know, because I had people asking me, oh, you know, I can get you a PPP loan. I'm cool. I don't need no PPP loan. Um, I save my money. I don't trick off. And, you know, we got enough in savings where, you know, we'll be all right. Um, But I noticed a lot of people doing it and promoting it. I remember taking the Instagram and telling folks, y'all do not get involved in this PPP shit. I know y'all feel like, you know, the $10,000 is worth it. It is not going to be worth it. They will be coming for y'all. Oh, I was cussed out. I was told, shut the fuck up. You're trying to protect the white man. Bitch, they've been stealing from us since slavery days. I'm like, okay, well, y'all get y'all scamming asses out my comments since that's how y'all get down. I also did a YouTube video about it back then. Y'all stop with these PPP loans. I get it. People are hurting. People are struggling. But it's going to be the poor you know what I'm saying? That they're going to come after once ev- once once the dust settles. It's going to be the regular people who are just wanting the money, who are, yeah, they were on some crooked shit. That's who they're going to come after. To me, like I've always said, this whole PPP thing was the biggest scam to basically dangle a carrot in front of regular people's faces. You can use any name. You can use, you know, make up social security numbers. You can use your homeboy in prison. And we're just going to give you this. There were no checks and balances. So that should have been a red flag. The fact that people who weren't even making 50000 a year were getting $50,000 in grant money when you don't have a, a million-dollar business is insane to me. And so I'm like, they're giving out this money too easily. They're trying to feed that prison industrial complex, okay? I saw the writing on the wall back then. And the reason why I said that they're trying to feed the prison industrial complex is the fact that you can basically use slave labor in prison. They don't have to pay prisoners. Most of our prisons make our furniture, lingerie from Victoria's Secrets. They make a lot of stuff in prison that you would be shocked. And these prisoners literally get paid three to five cents a day. Not an hour, a day, okay? So this is free labor. And I believe that's what it was about because they knew the economy was tanking You know, things were getting bad. We can't afford to really play the employees, but we can put the regular man and woman in prison for at least five to six years and have them doing manual labor and manufacturing in those prisons that will be able to tie us over, okay? So that is why I was very adamant that I did not want regular folks joining in, especially my tea sippers, honey, joining in in the the PPP debacle. So now this morning, this was posted on Discord, And the insider did a very in-depth investigation on a lot of these celebrities who also got PPP loans on taxpayers' cash. If you guys have not seen this article, it is very interesting. They go into depth about Post Malone, Chris Brown, and even Nickelback. And basically, they're saying that it's very interesting that these celebrities who are supposed to be rich you know, who are constantly shitting on their fans. How many times has Chris Brown called his fans broke for not buying his album or buying his merch and all types of shit? So the same people who call folks broke, they ran to go get these PPP loans. But upon further investigation, we're finding out that Post Malone and others, they didn't use this money for their employees. Remember, that was everybody's thing. Well, it doesn't matter if Jeffree Star got a PPP loan. He runs a bunch of businesses. He has employees to pay. But what they're finding out is that a lot of these celebrities, um, they kind of did the same thing as the regular man and woman. They weren't paying staff. They weren't paying for their building to host their merch. A lot of them were taking that money and they were buying properties. They were doing the same thing as the regular man and woman. But for some reason, there's not a crackdown on these fools going to jail. But there is a crackdown on your neighbor. There's a crackdown on the young girl. There's a crackdown on the young boy who were just trying to get some funds. And granted, some of them were just trying to stunt in front on social media, but some of them did actually need that money. So it's very easy to throw all them in jail, but these entertainment industry people, it's very hush-hush. So we're going to go ahead and read some of this article. So they're saying Post Malone applied for a $10 million grant from a taxpayer-funded federal program intended to provide emergency assistance and help to struggling artists recover from the pandemic. The program was called the Shuttered Venue Operations Grant. It was a lifeline for the entertainment business. Administered by Small Business Administration, it doled out $14.5 billion 
to institutions like movie theaters, ballet, opera, talent agents, performing arts venues, museums, unlike the Paycheck Protection Program, which many venues didn't qualify for, the Shuttered Venue Program was a grant, not a loan, that qualified applicants were eligible for for up to $10 million with no obligation to repay it, okay? So this was basically the PPP version for the celebrities and people in the arts, okay? But now what they're finding out is that the shuttered venue program was also plagued by ineffective oversight and loopholes that allowed some of the biggest names in the music industry to get huge payouts as an insider investigation found, okay? This is where the rabbit hole goes deep. R&B artists like Chris Brown got $10 million, rapper Lil Wayne got $8.9 million, 90s rockers Smashing Pumpkins got $8.6 million. Nickelback, yes, Nickelback, received $2 million. All told, Insider identified dozens of corporations and limited liability companies controlled by high-profile musical artists that received grants through this program. A single financial management firm in Los Angeles successfully submitted grants on behalf of 97 artists, venues, managers amounting to more than a quarter billion dollars in grant payouts. Insider analysis found that including more than 200 million for big name artists alone. And here's a picture of some other artists. Melissa Etheridge, 3.9 million. Steve Aoki, 9.9 million. Common, 2.8 million. Usher, 3.1 million. Corn, 5.3 million. Vampire Weekend, I don't even know who the hell they are. They got $8.3 damn million. Senator Chuck Schumer, who's also related to Amy Schumer, okay, one of the most unfunniest comics out there, he was one of the lawmakers who sponsored what was known as the, as the Save Our Stages bill and told his constituents that the money would be used for independent live venue operations, independent movie theaters, cultural institutions such as live performing arts organizations and museums. According to the press release, at a star-studded ceremony in April, Schumer was honored by the Recording Academy and the group behind the Grammys for passing the bill. A spokesperson for Schumer has denied to comment. And here's a picture of him being honored and recognized at this year's Grammys. So this article is pretty long, but what they're basically saying is that there was no real oversight on how this money was spent. It was supposed to go for the people. Um, this should have been helping theater employees. This should have been helping background actors and actresses who are now picketing on the SAG Afro line. This should have been helping the, the people who are actually in the arts, who make the movies what they are, who make the music industry what they are. This money should have been helped for like the writers, um, you know, people who work in production. But instead what they're finding out is that people like Post Malone, he got his money and, um, while many of his entertainment industry colleagues struggled to pay their rent under the pandemic era, because remember the ones who didn't get approved, they were, you know, showing their booty hole in their orifices on OnlyFans. So while they were showing this, you know, peen and, and cooch prints on OnlyFans, um, he bought a 9,000 square foot ski chalet in Park City, Utah, which was listed for $11.5 million dollars. And he paid for it in an all-cash transaction in February of 2021. By May, Post Malone bought an industrial space in a Salt Lake City suburb that had been listed for $1.4 million. There he opened a commercial forge to craft knives and swords. And this is a hobby of Post Malone. And that is what the representatives told the City Planning Commission. Later on that year, a corporation controlled by Post successfully applied for a $10 million grant from a taxpayer-funded federal program intended to provide emergency assistance to help struggling artist groups recover from the pandemic. So again, he took that money that was supposed to help, you know, Broadway actors and musicians. He got approved for that $10 million loan. And Posty, you know, everybody's favorite, you know, artist, he spent the money on himself. He bought a ski chalet. You know, he bought property. So my thing is this. If all these regular people are being arrested for the same thing, because, yeah, we had people tricking off and buying Gucci and Louie, but some of them, they bought houses in cash. Some of them bought properties in cash. And they were arrested for pride. 
why are these artists who did the same thing as these regular people not being arrested for fraud as well? They took money that was supposed to help. This was no different than a PPP. This was the artist version of the PPP, and many of them took money and did not help their employees. They did not help their businesses. They helped line their pockets further. So if you guys have not read this insider article, I will post the link down below. Y'all can read the whole article. But it's very interesting how this, this funding is not being highly scrutinized. And maybe because these people are rich and famous and you know, they have connections. Further on in the article, they also go on to say this, the SBA Inspector General has raised questions about the program's oversight, finding in a report last year that the SBA did not follow the fundamental grant management controls intended to protect taxpayer funds. In one case, the Inspector General reviewed an application for 55000 which resulted in a $551,000 grant, which was an overpayment of $496,000. In another instance, the SBA employee concluded that a recipient who initially received $4.9 million grant was actually only eligible for a $3 million grant, but the agency did not take any steps to recover the $1.9 million in overpayment. In response to the Inspector General's report, the SBA contested that contested those findings, saying both awards were justified. So to me, that sounds like a bunch of mushmouth bullshit. They're covering for their friends in Hollywood. And this is why a lot of people just don't feel anyways, okay? This is why a lot of regular men and women are tired. They don't care about the boycotts, unfortunately. Again, a lot of regular men and women are on those picket lines are background actors and actresses, but they're tired of the rich getting over. Um, recently was also announced today that Tyrese Gibson, okay, a.k.a. Cry Reese. Mother, what more do you want from me? Cry Reese is, is now wanting to sue Home Depot, which is very funny. This man, you know, who was also on MTV Cribs, who has bragged about, you know, being rich and all his money and being, you know, a, a big movie star. I'm from South Central, so you open your door and you look to the left and the right. I'm just playing. Now come on in. He now wants to sue Home Depot, so let's find out why he's suing Home Depot. Their high-profile name actor and singer Tyrese Gibson is also suing. His lawsuit is against Atlanta-based Home Depot after an incident at a California store back in February. This is video showing the encounter. He says he gave his credit card to two men who worked for him to pay for his items while he waited in the car. Now, Gibson claims he told the cashier that, but she refused to complete the transaction. He's seeking $1 million for racial profiling. Now, Home Depot said in a statement they value Gibson as a customer and will continue to reach out to him and his attorneys to resolve his concern. Can you please include that information? I was just there. I just walked. I was just in your store, ma'am. If you're going to talk to your manager, if you're going to talk to your manager, tell your manager the truth. I was just in the store and I gave my guys my credit card in front of your staff and team member, and I walked off. Don't say that I'm not there with no ID. All right, so you guys just heard that. So because this quote-unquote lowly cashier who was doing their job, when you take a transaction and the credit card is in your name, you need to be there to do the transaction. They don't know if they run that card if Tyrese is going to come back, you know, with his unstable ass and say, hey, I didn't, you know, order that transaction. Hey, this is fraud. She was protecting herself. If you can be in the store arguing back and forth and you have people recording you and all this goofy shit, just pay for the stuff yourself. You have the card in your hand, just swipe it. She didn't have to take the payment from your worker or whoever you sent to her because their name is not on the card. This lowly quote unquote cashier was protecting her job. She, she, so she should risk getting fired because of your ego? That is insane. So now he's suing. But the real tea is he's suing because a lot of these celebrities are going broke. Remember, Cry Reese was held in contempt, and he was ordered by a judge that he must pay $636,000 in child support and for his ex's lawyer fees, okay? This is why this man is really suing. 
the money's not coming in, Hollywood is shut down, and he has this 600000 plus judgment over his head. So if I can sue Home Depot for a million and, you know, get them for racial profiling and all this goofy shit, I can pay off my ex. That's his game plan, and I see through the bullshit. So let me go ahead and refresh y'all's memory. Tyrese had an ongoing child support battle with Samantha Lee Gibson, the main issue being that Tyrese was refusing to pay the $10,000 a month that he was ordered to pay last August in child support because he felt the judge was racist and biased against him. He also stated on the stand today that he feels like $10,000 is excessive and claims that Samantha doesn't need that much because she makes good money on her own. Then had the nerd to go on Instagram and do a 30-minute rant about how he was demanding that Benjamin Crump, Martin Luther King III, and Andrew Young show up at his child support trial. He wanted all these civil rights people to show up for him at his child support trial. That's how you know the money's running low. He was accusing the judge of racism and all types of nonsense, and so that ended up pissing the judge off even more, hence the reason why he got this huge-ass judgment against him. 22. That way you can set up cameras and you can document everything that's going to be discussed. Because this is all public record and public knowledge, there's nothing confidential about our case. It's all very public. We are going to be discussing Samantha's motion for contempt because she's in contempt of court. We're going to be discussing special master's motion for contempt. We're also going to be discussing Samantha's motion for attorney's fees. And we're also going to be discussing my motion for attorney's fees. You were supposed to pay for your own attorney since you want to argue about the validity of our court case and my family, attorney Benjamin Crump, to join me. I am asking Ambassador Andrew Young, the ex-mayor of Atlanta, and one of my nearest beloved brothers and friends to meet me. I'm asking Martin Luther King III, my brother, to meet me in the courthouse. That's what I want. And I want this man to do exactly what he's there to do on that bench. This is not a civil rights issue. This is a child support issue. Remember, this was your black queen that you were trolling black women with, and then your own black queen came out and was like, yeah, I'm not black. I don't know why he's doing that to you guys. So you and your ex-black queen, have a good life, but stop wasting our time with bogus lawsuits and stop you know, trying to have civil rights attorneys stand on your behalf. This is a child support issue. This is not a civil rights issue. So the judge saw through his bullshit and basically ordered him to pay this woman her money. And this is why Tyrese is suing Home Depot. But folks ain't ready for that conversation. This is why all these celebrities, including these reality TV stars, are now all coming together with a group lawsuit against NBC Universal and Bravo. See, Home Depot and Bravo and NBC Universal was their favorite spot when these checks were being cashed, when they were able to get acting gigs. But now that Hollywood has shut down, Everybody's running to file some type of lawsuit. Everybody's trying to find a way to get a bag. So I don't feel bad for Tyrese. I hope they end up throwing his lawsuit out. You're literally mad because this young lady did her job because she wouldn't allow somebody who was not Tyrese Gibson to use your credit card, sir, kick rocks. I'm so tired of all these random celebrity lawsuits that have now been popping up ever since Hollywood shut down. You know, now they all want a piece of the pie, but when they were collecting PPP loans and you know, flossing and fronting on social media, they weren't thinking about lawsuits. So this entire situation is a hot damn mess, but I want to hear from you all. What do y'all think about this PPP debacle, how they're quick to arrest regular everyday people, but when it comes to the Celebrity Welfare Fund, a.k.a. these SBA loans, all of a sudden they're walking on eggshells because a lot of these celebrities, they did not spend that money accordingly as they should have, but they're not being thrown in jail left and right. And then also, last but not least, how do y'all feel about the Tyrese, a.k.a. Cry Reese Gibson situation um, where he's now crying and trying to sue Home Depot because the employee did their job? Do y'all feel like he has a case or do you feel like his case will be, you know, tossed out in the street just like his career. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I would love to know y'all's thoughts. Leave a comment below. 
Feel free to like the video. Please make sure to share the video. And also, last but not least, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. I appreciate y'all. We finally hit, I think, like 980,000. Somebody told me that the other day. So thank y'all for just subscribing and showing my channel love. Thank y'all for the likes and, you know, just, you know, just really support me. I really appreciate it. I will talk to y'all later. Enjoy your weekend. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.